Number 10, Yes Men. I talk about World War II a lot on this channel, but it's hard not to. It's the biggest, baddest war ever. So it would have been nice to avoid the whole thing, really. Wouldn't have been, it would have been great. And honestly, it, it could have been. But more interesting, I think, and pretty shameful, was how the world treated the rise of Mustache Man. Germany, after World War I, went from stinky zero to hunky hero in just a couple decades, thanks to the evil and terrible deeds of Mustache Man. When Mustache Man wanted more territory, the Allied nations practiced something called appeasement. Basically, okay, you can have Austria, but no Czechoslovakia, that's out of bounds, you can't have it. Then he would go and take it, and nothing was done about it. Mustache Man steamrolled his way through Europe, when really, he could have been stopped years prior. Shameful, really. Number nine, stirring the pot. I had to get these two out of the way. World War I, big shame on that one, Chief. Being one of the main causes of World War II is a great point, but for my money, it's how it even started in the first place. Europe was seeing rising tensions as every major power in the neighborhood was bulking up like Johnny Bravo on steroids. They were also looking at gaining more land, which is typical, but what wasn't was the blaming and name game that everyone seemed to uphold. After Franz Ferdinand was shot in Sarajevo, what could have been a conflict between Serbs and Austrians exploded into the worst global conflict at the time, until the sequel. Russia declared war on Austria, Germany declared war on them, then France with a rebuttal, and then the Ottomans were there too. It was just really a big mess. It's shameful how much human life was lost in such a short time, arguably over nothing. Number eight. Mad. For our older audience, they may remember a scarier time in life when the Soviet Union and the United States were at each other's throats. The Cold War. Not sure why it's called the Cold War, because uh, there was a lot of hot wars in that time period. And you know what's hotter than war, right? Nuclear Armageddon. Yes, this was a time of great panic and fear, as the threat of nuclear war was very real. I don't have enough time to bring up every incident, but things did escalate. Checkpoint Charlie, the Cuban Missile Crisis, some radar issues. You get the point. I went over to see the chief last night, and you know what? He said it wasn't it. Mutually Assured Destruction was the acronym made to comfort most people in the idea that if one nuclear weapon is detonated, then all of them will, in response, destroy one another. Which I think is very shameful. Nukes are just the worst. Let's put them away. Put them away. We don't need them, guys. Come on. Number seven, civil rights. I know a lot of these are World War II related, but, but bear with me, guys. It had a lot of uncomfortable moments. Some that should be talked about. Acknowledging and apologizing for mistakes of the past is a sure way to have a brighter future. During World War II, there was something called the Germany First policy, meaning a lot of effort was made to defeat Germany first, but Imperial Japan was just as much as a threat. Apparently so much so that President Roosevelt wanted to put Japanese Americans in something called relocation camps. Thousands of Japanese Americans and Japanese Canadians, cause oh yeah, we did it too, were taken from their homes and relocated to camps in order to prevent a second Pearl Harbor. You don't need an HR manager to tell you what an egregious act this is against civil rights. While they were not like the camps found in Europe, it's yet another dark splotch on two countries who boast about their freedoms and democracy. The camps were closed shortly after the war had ended. Number six, moving forward together. European settlers were not very nice to Indian tribes. That's probably no surprise to anyone. But what might be unknown to some is Canada's treatment of First Nations peoples. More specifically, residential schools, a system supported by the church and Canadian government to indoctrinate and assimilate First Nations children into European North American culture. Children were forcibly taken from their homes and were forced to learn against their own beliefs, language, and were victims of crimes and physical harm. Sadly for First Nations, this was somewhat effective and did a good job displacing families. The last residential school closed in 1997, which for many is still too recent and a painful reminder of Canada's past. Furthering the horrors of the residential schools was the discovery of unmarked graves in 2021, where hundreds of indigenous children's remains were found, showing that Canada has a long way to go. We can and will do better. Number five, sticky situation. The molasses flood of 1919 sounds like a lot of sweet fun, but it was actually a horrific event, and not just for diabetics. It was uncomfortable for two reasons. Reason number one being that 21 people lost their lives at what must have been the most confusing thing ever to see. A rush of sticky molasses flooded the streets of Boston and caused a crazy amount of damage. Reason number two being, well, how this occurred in the first place. I'll give the folks at home a second to take a guess on how they think it happened. Ready? If you said workplace neglect, 
Congratulations, you win bragging rights. Basically, it was foobar from the start. The large tank that held the sweet stuff wasn't built properly, wasn't properly inspected by professionals. No one really understood, I guess, that fermentation produces gas, which made an already unsafe tank more unsafe. And well, there you go, boom, an unholy sticky flood. Probably one of the biggest lessons in work safety history. And let's be honest, who wants to swim in molasses? You never get out of it. Number four, broken arrow. The Cold War wasn't exactly cold, as nuclear weapons had the potential to make it hot. Too hot. So here's something to make everyone lose a little more sleep at night, because I know everyone at home is stress free right now and gets a full eight hours of sleep. Today, when you lay your wee head to rest on count sheep, I want you to think about broken arrow. No, not actually a broken arrow, but the broken arrow incident or incidents, which if you didn't know is the code phrase for a nuclear device gun MIA. For example, on July 28th, a US aircraft from Dover Air Force Base, Delaware was carrying three nuclear bombs over the Atlantic Ocean. The plane experienced a loss of power and the crew jettisoned two nuclear bombs into the ocean and they have never been recovered. Wow, that's great. There were at least another dozen broken arrow incidents from the 1950s until the end of the Cold War. Now as bad as that sounds, I mean it's pretty bad. These are our nukes we're talking about. At least America's lost bombs were recorded. Nobody really knows how many bombs the Soviet Union lost during the Cold War. Gee, now I feel real swell and safe. Number three, I'll never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. The Titanic. Everyone knows the Titanic, and everyone remembers the steamy scene from the movie in the back of what looks like the first car ever made. Nice. But what's shameful about Titanic is the hubris of its claim to fame. An unsinkable ship that, well, was thought to be unsinkable. Well, now it's at a very deep point in the Atlantic Ocean, so that plan didn't exactly work out, did it? There were some safety measures put in place, but who needs them when your ship will never founder? There's many theories on how and why the Titanic sank, from the lack of lifeboats, the captain, and even its construction and design. But definitely, it was a hard sell on the unsinkable. You'd be surprised how vulnerable you are when you assume that you're invulnerable. Very true. Number two. Lethal production. The American Civil War was the crucible that shaped America. A few years of brutal fighting, brother versus brother, had left its mark on the country. President Abraham Lincoln had survived the war and the chaos of the politics that forced a nation into civil war. Emancipation Proclamation set a severely brutalized people free from their bonds. So after all this hair pulling stress, Lincoln found himself in Ford's theater for some entertainment. What Lincoln actually got was a bullet in the head by John Wilkes Booth, failed actor and shameful killer. Say what you will about Lincoln's top hat and beard, Lincoln held the country together the best he could. I don't know if anyone today had the leadership to match his. Shame he wasn't around longer. Who knows what else he could have accomplished. Number one, the Vietnam War. Probably the most humbling moment in American history. The Vietnam War was America's response to contain the evil spread of the evil communism and to just get rid of those pesky communists. What was thought to be an easily winnable war turned into a tragic loss of life for both sides and a snipe storm from the media in America, criticizing the American involvement in the first place. Eventually, America would have to pull out of Vietnam and leave a bad taste in everyone's mouth. While I'm not sure the war for Vietnamese independence can be prevented, the American involvement could have been, and thus is a mistake that many to this day cannot forget. Number 10, the obvious one. I talked to the chief early this morning. He looked at me and he said, that's not it. World War II, history's favorite mustache man and the tragic loss of life that was the Holocaust. The German answer to the Jewish question, or so they described it as, was a deliberate and calculated effort to annihilate the Jewish peoples of Europe. And if they had won the war, most likely the world. Sent to labor camps where most met their ends to brutal torment and termination. As if this wasn't enough, Jewish peoples were not the only targets, as pretty much anyone deemed unworthy by the state was sentenced or dealt with. POWs, political rivals, civilians, Slavs, homosexuals, and just, just anybody. It was, it was really bad, man. All of these people found themselves at the worst of humans and a part of the worst destructive conflict in human history. My small tidbit does not do it justice. It is a conversation that should always be had and not from a semi-funny internet host. Number nine, the not so obvious one. Arguably worse, and I'm not even sure how that's possible, is the Holodomor. 
What exactly is that, you may be asking? Well, don't feel silly for not knowing. Unless you're Ukrainian or family that are, you most likely would not know. Basically, in the 1930s, Ukraine started to outshine the newly formed Soviet Union and was gaining economic independence. In a totalitarian communist regime, that's not what you want your people to do. As if they do, they'll most likely rebel against you and your repression. So, Sosef Jalin's answer was to oppress the people of Ukraine even harder. Arrests, intimidation, and removing leaders from the position. Any leaders, even local church leaders. Collectivization meant anyone's land, property, and for this case, grain, the state's land, property, and grain. The deliberate starvation of the Ukrainian people left millions dead in what rivals what was happening in Western Europe years later. Yet again, another situation that is difficult to talk about, and I cannot do it just in the short amount of time, but I can tell you what happened and can maybe make a dark situation lighter with some humor. Number 8. The Sleeping Giant's Revenge When Japan attacked the US naval base of Pearl Harbor in 1941, they thought it was a move in their favor. Knock out a good portion of the US Pacific Fleet and damage the base so rebuilding and reorganizing will take time. Time Japan needed to conquer the Pacific. However, this was a stupid plan for many reasons that honestly could be its own video, but the main reason being that the US had the industrial and economic might to take on all Axis powers single handed. And now they had a reason to fight. That's a very dangerous enemy. Their mistake would be fully realized in 1945 when the US launched the first nuclear bombs ever to be used on a real civilian target. The cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were vaporized in seconds and hundreds of thousands of people perished. Most wars end in a depressing walk into the treaty room. World War II ends with the apocalypse. While these nations were at war, the debate for use of such weapons and the decision made is still talked about today. Number 7. When in doubt, throw it out. In 2022, I don't have to tell you about climate change or the effects on the environment. If I do, then perhaps a few episodes of Bill Nye the Science Guy will help you along the way. It's a good show. But what's very shameful is how we treated this big blue and green spinning ball we all live on. And oh yes, I said ball. Earth is not round. Sorry not sorry flat earthers. Since the industrial revolution, it's been nothing but high pollution and dumping garbage in the ocean. Which, hey, I get it. Out of sight, out of mind. I do the same thing when ice falls from the dispenser from the fridge. What do you expect me to do? Pick it up, mom? Pfft. How about sweep it underneath the fridge with the already dirty pair of socks, mom? Nice try though. But seriously, the way we treated our own planet is shameful. It's our home, how we came to be. And we just haven't been treating Mother Earth that well, really. Plus, I've seen Wally. -E. I don't want to end up like that. So you make sure you recycle, eat your vegetables, and maybe only take the self driving car out twice a week. I don't know. Number six, YouTube's favorite S word. Come on, you know I had to talk about this. This is just very shameful. Well, most people think of America during the S trade days. It is not an American invention. It has been happening for thousands of years and sadly still continues today in certain corners of the world. I like people. I like most people. And for one, I could never bring myself to ever treat another person this way. It is a very shameful part of human history in general. And hopefully one day there will be a world where that has been eradicated completely. I'd like to talk more on this subject, but it's a topic that deserves a real conversation. Not from a mildly funny Chris Farley like comedian on the internet. Sorry. Number five. Look ma, I've got three arms. Nukes are bad, radiation is bad. I for one wouldn't want a third arm. As much as I love General Grievous, but we've been over that. But once again for our older audience and or people who were around in the 1980s, they might remember something of a real disaster with nuclear results. No, not a bomb or a missile, but a nuclear reactor malfunction. The Chernobyl disaster was a malfunction in Chernobyl reactor number four that caused a meltdown, kind of like me when I'm reading right now. Explosions in the reactor leaked very lethal amounts of radiation. The handling of the situation was shameful to say the least as poor design and negligence is to blame. The nearby city of Pripyat had to evacuate. 50,000 people used to live here and now it's a ghost town. That was for all my Call of Duty fans in the audience but yes, that is what they're talking about in the game. To this day the city is abandoned and people will not be able to return for many many years to come. This accident did claim the lives of many people and the health effects of the radiation are still being monitored today. Number 3. The Glove Michael Jackson's one glove look was the second famous glove next to OJ Simpson's glove during the trial of the death of his wife Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. Despite evidence pointing him being guilty, the verdict came in not guilty. Millions of people tuned into what was called the trial of the century. No matter how you feel about the verdict, it can be uncomfortable to talk about as two people were still killed and their killer may still be on the loose. 
I mean, there's also a book that he wrote called If I Did It. All I'm saying is if I took a cookie from the cookie jar, I wouldn't tell my mom a story about a little chubby kid going to get a cookie in the cookie jar. Number two, Avasi Land Lovers. Pirates, literally any one of them really, but most famously the Pirates of the Caribbean. Despite how cool Disney and Johnny Depp make pirates look good, they were actually a nasty lot. Sure, maybe not the worst, but at the end of the day, they weren't great. Crooks, criminals, terrors of the sea. Blackbeard, probably the most infamous pirate besides Jack Sparrow, raided many ships in his time, and he didn't exactly ask nicely. Oh, and they'll relate down to number one as well. You guys will like this one. Number one, hygiene. You guys love hygiene. I can tell from watching Taylor's videos. There's like six parts. But think about it for a moment. Think about what the average person smelled like before 1850. No indoor plumbing, no regular bathing, and no Irish spring. I gotta have my Irish spring. For me, I always think how uncomfortable the room must have been on that summer day signing the Declaration of Independence. Here you go, John Hancock, sign here and take a bath, man. A lot of history's defining moments were also probably the stinkiest. Number 10, not so friendly fire. What happens when you mix an Ottoman invasion, alcohol, and gunpowder? I'm not sure, but I imagine it's pretty bad. Just like the Battle of Karensbees, where embarrassingly enough, the Austrian army fired upon itself. Now, looking up military history will tell you that friendly fire incidents are more common than you might think. I'm looking at you, Vietnam War, but this incident is a little more unique as it may have started over a bottle of booze. A group of soldiers procured some alcohol and was enjoying the joys of liquid courage. After getting too boisterous, more Austrians wanted to join in. Not wanting to share their boozy finds and feelings, a fight broke out. The Austrian army was composed of multiple nations, so there were a few different languages being spoken. And by that, I mean a very confusing fight broke out. Eventually, someone fired a shot, someone shouted Turks, and a very embarrassing battle ensued. By the end, it's speculated that 10,000 Austrians were unalived during this boozy mistake. That's, hey. Hey, happens. Mistakes are made, happens. Number nine, history's second favorite mustache. When we talk about history, it's really hard not to talk about Germany and a little man with a weird mustache. World War II is the cause and effect for a lot of reasons and things today. That too could honestly be its own video, but what's rather uncommon to talk about in history's classrooms is history's second favorite mustache man rhymes with Sosef Jalin. The battles between Germany and the Soviet Union during World War II were some of the worst, Stalingrad having the most casualties than any other battle during the war. The Soviet Union would fight back its invaders, but when they were pushing into the heart of Germany, it wasn't so much as liberating as oppressing. oppressing. The comrade in chief is known for targeting ethnic groups with starvation and having a tight grip on the Soviet people by threatening them with gulags. Harsh and brutal labor camps where anyone who opposed his regime would be worked to death in conditions that harsh and brutal simply don't cover. Historians believe his regime was responsible for the deaths of 20 million people, which is almost double the amount of his German doppelganger. Not cool. Number eight, abandoned by the world. 1930s Germany wasn't a great place to be if you were Jewish. Matter of fact, anywhere near Germany was a bad time for Jewish people. Some people saw the writing on the wall and it was clear. Anyone lighting a menorah during the holiday season needed to leave Europe and set sail for more liberal waters. In 1939, a vessel called the St. Louis arrived in North American waters, searching for freedom and to escape persecution persecution that would likely lead to their deaths. This is an unfortunate black spot in western democracies. As for the weary travelers, finding someone who would take them in was proving difficult. They tried Cuba, but were refused all but a handful. Then the US, same thing happened. They even tried glorious Canada, where they too refused them. Canada, a country of freedom and acceptance for all, turned down people in their darkest hour. Sadly, the boat returned to Europe where they met the same fate as other Jews who were oppressed by the regime. Number seven, the horror, the horror. Going through this list, there's going to be war. Unfortunately, it's a part of human history. Not that I'm taking a position of pro or anti-war, you just can't deny the loss of life and destruction it causes. But something I think most Americans remember because so much can be learned from it, the Vietnam War. The 60s were a crazy time to be alive. There was huge cultural changes happening everywhere, but America was having trouble at home and trouble abroad. A war that was meant to contain the evil spread of communism so it didn't dare make its way to America's backyard. After years of destruction, loss, and enough horrific images to give anybody PTSD, thousands of lives lost on both sides, and while both sides did fight bravely, 
It is an American loss. A humbling moment in American history. Shortly after America pulled troops from Vietnam, Saigon would fall to the communists and is now Ho Chi Minh City. Number 6. Mirrored The Vietnam War was an interesting time for America. The Viet Cong proved to be a very formidable foe. How does a small Asian nation take on the world's largest superpower and come out on top? Well, by playing lives. Sure, VC would lose almost every battle, but they would take a lot of American lives in the process. It was a bad look. However, none of this would be possible without Soviet support. After all, Russian weapons don't grow on trees. Communists from Russia and China supported the VC, so when the Soviet Union was headed to Afghanistan in the 80s for pretty much the same reason, Guess where the Mujahideen got their anti-aircraft missiles from? Yeah, that's right, the US. Although different in details, in broader strokes, the Soviet-Afghan war is the exact same war as Vietnam. Years of ruthless fighting, guerrilla tactics, and superpowers aiding the resistance. The Soviet army pulls out years later. Perhaps a humbling moment for the big communist bear. I don't know. It's weird how the same thing happened. Like the exact, that's so crazy. How could you let the same thing happen? I don't know. Number five, Destiny. I, for one, am not a believer in destiny. I believe that if you want something bad enough, you can take it and make it yours. But in a modern world, I think we all carve our own path. Not to get too Marty McFly on you, but have you ever thought of a choice you made when you could have made another? Like, what if I didn't have Taco Bell on my 21st birthday? Would I still have vomited after those 12 tequila shots? I'll never know. But one choice, or rather blunder, changed the world as we know it is the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Triggered World War I, which caused World War II, which caused the Cold War, which is why we live in a globalist world where technology and economy have redefined everything we know. Franz's driver took a wrong turn in his car and ended up beside one of the amateur assassins. All that just from one bullet, one man. Who knows what would have happened if that turn wasn't made? Guess we'll never know. Anyone down for some Taco Bell? Number four, the Bay of Pigs. Cuba becoming a communist country in America's backyard was scary. I mean, what if they tried to spread the idea of free healthcare? I'm just kidding. In a world of mutually assured nuclear destruction, this was actually pretty bad. So before things could get any worse, the CIA put together a crack team of anti-Fidel Cubans supplied with American weapons and training. And so, the Bay of Pigs invasion commenced. However, after reducing the amount of air support to aid in the landings, in hopes that it would clear America of any involvement, not sure how that works, the CIA force was quickly defeated, and even had Castro boasting his cadre's effectiveness on the battlefield as it was coming to a close. It was not a good look for America, as it seemed the communists really might be more powerful. Not to worry though, Google how many of those countries are left. We came out on top. Just took, you know, 70 years and a bunch of wars, but we came out on top. Number three, Ik bin ein Belena. This may be old news to those of our older audience, but news to younger. And honestly, it's crazy that it even happened in the first place. So World War II ends, right? And the Allies are all super good friends, right? Wrong! Berlin basically gets split into two, Capitalist West and Communist East. So the Cold War kicks off, a very strong disagreement on what political and economical structure is better. As it turns out, life was just better on the West. People in the East just didn't have access to certain things the West did. So people started bailing shit. I don't blame them. So much so that a wall was built dividing the two. This may not sound like much, but it was huge. The Berlin Wall divided families, business, and put on the full display of failure that communism was. As JFK said, democracy is not perfect, but we've never had to put a wall up to keep our people in. And honestly, the guy's right. That's just kind of crazy. Number two, can't beat them, join them. Japan was the new cool kid in school, and by that, I mean they were the most powerful force in Asia in the late 1930s. Japan rapidly adopted westernized ideas, structures, and the old habit of invading foreign nations, and wrecking absolute havoc when there. Specifically, Nanking in 1937. Some historians consider this to be the beginning of World War II, but it's debatable. What's not debatable is the uncomfortable way Imperial Japanese forces treated Chinese civilians. Japan was expanding during the early 20th century, and China was next on the schedule. I'm going to recommend you Google this one at home, as there is so much naughty stuff about Nanking in 1937 that I'd give the censors a headache just thinking about it. There's a really infamous photograph that you probably haven't seen, and it's 100% not safe for work. The invasion of China and incidents like 
dropped out of Nanking still have sour relations between the two nations today. Number one, the world is yours. Okay, so kind of a broad stroke here, but very fitting. I'm putting everything the British Empire did in the number one spot. I mean, come on, guys, it's the British Empire. Sure, it's no secret what they did, but there's so much to unpack here. It's a lot. Redcoats have been making things uncomfortable since the late 1600s. The American colonies and how they treated Indians, the occupation of actual India, and the opium wars in China, just to name a few. At its height, the British Empire had conquered 25% of the Earth's land surface. And like I always say, when you get that big, you gotta break a few eggs along the way to make your omelet. 